What's up, everybody? Welcome to the latest episode of Games Up Podcast. My name is Cameron mcculloch Keeble, and I'm joined, as ever, by uh, Lawrence Sidney. Hi! And him! Hello! <laughs> You're I'm back! Here. I'm here now, yes. You're alive! You're way, yes, our I'm way alive. with time. How are you doing? Yeah, good, good. Good. You made yeah. it out of London? Yeah, I did. They let you out? Yeah. You got past the Only barriers? For yeah. Only for a day. <laughs> but they're paying me, you know, so it's okay. Did you they're eat the food in London? To... Yes. Because yeah. after you eat the food in London, you can't leave. <laughs> <laughs> well... Uh, well, well, I've, been here a while. I've okay. seen you eat food in London. Mm. 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 Shall we do the news? Let's. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, there are five items on the news. Is this yes. sparse news week? Five minutes. That's, that's well. No. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. We've got. We've taken longer on the news. We've we've grown in length, as it were. We 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 take more time and dilly dally yeah. at each point. I know that once there was an episode we took about an hour to get through the news. Yeah, we we had. <laughs> I think 20, that was a 40. Yeah. We had 28 <laughs> items on the list that week. Anyway, number one, uh, Ubisoft has announced its latest project, mm-hmm. but it's going to take you a bit by surprise. So, mm-hmm. guesses, please, gentlemen. Um, <laughs> I've got no idea. I've got to be honest with you. Okay. I've decided to paint the whole of New Orleans uh, <laughs> um, blue. Nope, uh, they are opening a theme park. Oh, really? Yep. Wow. Uh, they're going to... Build... Is it in New Orleans? They have that much money. Apparently they do, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, they're going to build a theme park designed around the Assassin's Creed, Rabbids and Just Dance franchises. <laughs> Rabbids. That's yeah. Beautiful. Did you think they had, like, have to, had to use up some profits before the end of the year? <laughs> I'm sad that Rabbids is the, the franchise now. Yeah. I wonder... Like how many? Well, see, the thing is, I wonder how many other franchises they could actually choose from, because like you can't really make a theme park out of Far Cry. (laughs) We could, (laughs) if you could, it would be the most awesome theme park. It would be pretty cool. Yeah. You just let loose honey badgers on an island full of tourists. You're allowed to cut yourself off the zip wire halfway through and (laughs) fall on the guy and strangle him. That would be great. Ah, yeah. Okay, maybe they should do that. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Ubisoft's next project's a theme park, which is interesting. Um. What's it just dance ride look like? I don't know. <laughs> I I mean, I figure it's going to be like... Dance, just dance the game. Dance machines, but it seems a bit small for a theme park. Yeah. I don't know. I maybe... No, it's a dance, dance floor that, where the floor drops away. I mean, rabbits are like... The rabbits are really, like, huge in other... Like, in France, specifically, the rabbits are huge. Yeah? Yeah, they're like the minions here, apparently, is rabbits there. I feel sorry for Raymond. <laughs> just yeah, Rayman kind of did get screwed in that regard. Although yeah. he's had some game, good games since. Yeah, no. Origins. Mm-hmm. Uh, we we happy with that one? I'd say we've okay. we've adequately explored. I don't. One. Yeah, there's not much more exploring you can really do with a story like that, is there? Mm-hmm. Uh, number two, The Witcher Three is getting an expansion pack this October. Yep. Um, oh. The interesting thing about this one, though, is that it will be released physically as well mm-hmm. as digitally. Uh, and that physical release will come with a, a pack of Gwent cards from the from the game. But um physical DLC yeah, but is it's... a bit is something we haven't heard for a long time. Yeah, kinda that's, going back that's... to the olden days. Yeah, Formal it seems way. like they're treating it like a proper expansion. Well pack. yeah, like mm. from what I read, um is this one free or not then? Oh, uh, no, they, no, they no, did no, their no. free DLC, didn't they? Yeah. Um from from what I know of CJ Project Red, I'm sure we're gonna get a massive amount of content. I hope so. You know. Um, I mean, like they're not the only developers to do this. The Borderlands franchise did it with their... Uh, they released physical DLC. Obviously, uh, GTA did the physical DLC. Mm. Red Dead. So, maybe it's something sort of in that ilk and size, and I hope so. Yeah, me too. Mm. Me too. It's just, uh, just interesting that we haven't seen something like this happen. Also, I realise I cut you off mid-sentence there, and I... I can't remember what I was about I'm to terribly say, so... Sorry. Probably wasn't all that important. Speaking of cutting you off, uh, Apple, number three, Apple Mm. has unveiled their newest version of the Apple TV, uh, and it's kind of a games console? Yeah. Sort of? Oh, is this their their big announcement, though? Yeah. Was was built up for the... Because there was a thing about them saying, like, everyone thought they were going to do something massive in gaming. Yeah. So they released the Apple TV, and it comes with a controller-style remote. Mm-hmm. In the same way that the Wii Moat was a controller uh, style remote. Oh yeah. Yeah, like let me try and bring up a, an image of it. The 
the remote is like um have you seen an apple tv remote like the small oh they look yeah, kind of no, like an ipod yeah, Nano. No, have, yeah well it's like that but with a touchpad at the top yeah. um hmm. and i think that touchpad can be so that's the original ones yeah here, the one with like the click wheel style thing good old click wheel yeah <laughs> bring back the click wheel um <laughs> But the new one has like a touchpad here instead of um yes. yeah and uh they kind of seem to be making a real push for the app store. There we go. There's the new one. Yeah. So that's a touchpad. These are the buttons on it. Okay. Yeah. They kind of seem to be making a real. Would you say that's uh, reinventing the wheel? <laughs> Very good, sir. Mm. Very good. It really wasn't. Carry um, on. Yeah, they kind of seem to be making a real push for the App Store to be mm. like this new games marketplace. Like they announced they're getting Guitar Hero, the new one. Oh, really? Yeah, that's coming out with it. Mm. Uh, Disney Infinity 3.0 is coming out with it. Uh, uh, Crossy Road. <laughs> I don't know. That was announced for it as well. But um, That's the kind of quality of games I was expecting you to kind of list off. Yeah, like <laughs> I... <laughs> I but they're all if... things that you find on a, on an iPhone. Yeah, yeah, see, that's the thing. And my question is, like, do you think a games console could survive on Angry Birds-style experiences? Yeah, see, I, I don't know about this. It's the same with the way Windows 10 is kind of trying to be, like, this big gaming thing as well. Mm -hmm. But the gaming market that they're looking at is sort of kind of small indies and apps. Right. You know, um, can it survive on that? Ugh. I think is I can't imagine going out and buying something for the experience of then playing Crossy Road and Angry Birds. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Least of all like know. Apple prices. Yeah, yeah, that's true. the The device is going to cost. I think it's a hundred and eighty or a hundred and fifty dollars. So what, uh, like a hundred and eighty pounds here? Yeah, we, for, well, yeah. For some reason, we get one to one. I don't know why this is. Yeah, it's silly. Yeah. Especially mm. with like actual games prices. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know whether this will do what they're expecting it to do. It's certainly it's not going to take over the living room. Uh, See, I do wonder. It's it's a very interesting kind of um, way that these things have developed. Where at one point it was anyone could put their phone, anyone could put their game on the market onto like um, your Androids and things like that. And now it's kind of getting to the point where all the big players have noticed it and are going, "Oh, we can accommodate that." Yeah, 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 yeah. But I don't know if they will as much as, you know, um, it's whether you can actually afford to kind of do that, you know. The small games, do they really have the budget to do, like, you know, the games that are good enough to be bought yeah. on those devices? On something like this, yeah. I mean, and are, they, are they also okay with advertising? That was one thing I was mm -hmm. wondering. Because mm -hmm. you know all those games come with, like, those big ads or the little things at the bottom all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm wondering about them. Yeah, I think it's a case of, like many platforms, where the impetus will really be on <coughs> the developers to do something interesting with it. But yeah. that's a problem, because you have to have an audience of people with the device in their homes already for developers to want to do... It's the whole PlayStation Vita um, infinite circle yeah. of hatred that... You need people to buy the device to get devs to use it, but you need devs to use it for people to buy yeah. the device. And so... The only way you cure that is you have a couple of good uh, exclusives to begin with. Exactly. You yeah. come out with a launch so, lineup. Either mm -hmm. way, I don't expect anything I think the else. awfully specific controller might get in the way a bit, though. They are allowing... There are third-party controllers that are coming out, and there is yeah, one true. that looks very Xbox, PlayStation, like, gamepad-like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but... It looks very different to the controller they have here. And it's certainly like, this can be played with like an iPhone or an yeah. iPad or an iPod, but it can't be played in the same way you'd play a controller because that's yeah. an actual controller. So... I'm not a fan of the loss of uh, physical controls and things like that, though. Yeah, I like... Thing. Yeah, physical feedback is always the mm. way to go, I'd say. Um, mm. I don't know whether this will survive. It certainly won't take over the you know, the living room like they're wanting it to. But Apple TV for the past few years has kind of been like a sweeper hit. It's not like huge and it's not, mm. you know, the biggest at doing what it does, but it's successful enough that they've kept it going. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see how this affects the App Store going forward. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
Can you imagine if, if, if Apple manages to crack a hole in the in the console thingy and become oh, and the yeah. big uh, the big three become the big four? I don't Can you think... imagine being at E3? Oh, yeah. I Maybe actually I could very much imagine <laughs> them being at E3. Really? Every every Apple trade show I've ever seen has been like a version of A3 as far as I'm concerned. See, I disagree. I think like the Apple trade shows are... They, they... There's not enough like neon lighting and dubstep. <laughs> but there's plenty of hype. People that is true. There's a lot of hype. Mm. And what? People dressed in zombie outfits. Oh, God, yes, yeah. They, they, the they guy with the moon face. Yeah. Not to make a tit of themselves. <laughs> yeah, that's true. No, E3 has to have a bit of tittery. Mm. It's oh, yeah. not E3 if, it, if you don't cringe at it slightly. Yeah. Number four, uh, Twitch plays Dark Souls. Oh yeah, yeah. Has made it <laughs> past it. Ornstein and Smell. Mm. Yeah, it's quite fast. Which is insane. <laughs> That's pretty impressive. Um, they're cheating though. But is it is it Are tool they? assisted? So the way it works is, um, I I actually watched it for a bit, but for the first two days they were just in the same room throughout the entire thing, and the person running it changed it so that essentially it, it's really painful to watch now, unfortunately, but. Essentially, every second it pauses for like 60. Um, and the way it works is that they queue the command up. Oh, right, okay. So you, so what happens is it pauses and everyone's like, uh, attack, 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 attack. Lists it, vote, people vote what they want, and then the action happens. But then it stops again and vote, and pauses again. Oh, right, okay. So it's, it's a little bit painful because it is... Um, like a PowerPoint presentation. Yeah, you watch <laughs> right. it for sort of an hour and you realise that we've moved a little bit. It takes a lot of dedication. Hmm. It's still clever, though. I mean, it's incredible the amount of oh, yeah. the way people... Have you seen the guy who's defeated Dark Souls with a Guitar Hero controller? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's insane. Well, there's the guy that's done yeah. it. Yeah, but he also did it um, recently. I think he just finished doing it um, in voice alone. In voice alone? Yeah, yeah. My it's really God. good. It's really funny to watch. Oh, man. It's incredible the lengths that people will go to to, to say they completed a game in a certain way. But it seems to be working, so good for them. Yeah. Indeed. And number five, uh, the final item on the list, and leading up to an important thing that hopefully you're listening for, uh, EGX has added various games to its lineup, including uh, the Xbox and PlayStation lineup. So on top of all the things that you can play already, like uh, Battlefront, like Just Cause, like this, that, the other, uh, we now have Halo 5, Forza, Rise of the Tomb Raider, the Uncharted Collection, Until Dawn, and I think, honestly, most inter- interestingly, PlayStation's VR. Oh, yeah. Project Morpheus really? will be there and we'd be playable. Ooh. So that will be very interesting to know. Um, I'm I'm going to put, a, hopefully, a feather in your cap, though. Oh, yeah? No no mention of Hitman yet. Oh, yeah. For a game that comes out in December. Oh. Ooh, I really is... want it to be good. I really do. Yeah. <laughs> it looks so good. The, the, the gameplay trailer they released of it. It looks exactly what you want like the Hitman game to be as a person who played the other ones. Right. But then, is that all there is? We haven't seen anything yeah, else. Yeah, yeah. I really hope we get to see do you something. Think, do you think there's some dark secret? Like, uh, well, like they summoned a demon well, we, and sacrificed? Well, we, we reckon... <laughs> we, we did reckon, um... Kind of that it might be more episodic than uh, they're laying on. Yeah, that, that's that's nowhere near the kind of dark secret I'm thinking about. No? No. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? It's like, the developer's closed. It's gone. Kind of well, I was, on. like I was saying, thinking more along the lines of demonic pact. I was going to say, you were thinking more sacrificial on. goat than marketing <laughs> strategy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, mm-hmm. It'll be interesting to see what gets uh, added to the lineup as we get closer and closer, because we've got... Well, you've heard him, EGX. There's the plea. Um, we've got, like, 12 days, I think, until it opens. Yeah. Uh, and you could be there. <laughs> um, yeah. We're giving away a ticket to EGX on Saturday. It's a day ticket, so it'll get you in from 11 till 7, which will get you a fair amount of time to go hands-on with a whole bunch of things, uh, go play indie games, go see developer sessions. Shuhei Yoshida is going to be there at some point over the weekend. The uh, Uncharted Collection are doing a development session. Valve are doing a development session with VR. Really Ooh. interesting stuff. All you have to do to be entered into this damn fine competition of ours uh, is go to our Facebook page, Find the the post that this video was on, like it, and share it. That's it. You'll be added into the draw. We will draw this on the 22nd. So that's next Tuesday. So this video comes out on Monday. Uh, the competition closes next Monday. It will draw on the 22nd. Um, and then if you win, it's your ticket. You do what you want with it. 
well, you you come to EGX with it. It's not like transferable or anything. But it's your ticket. Come to EGX and play all the games. Uh, f- check the uh, description below, the text-based description section below for the full terms and conditions. Uh, good luck, and thank you for joining us if you did to take part in the competition. Good? Huzzah! Marvellous. Right then, uh, our topic of the week, this fine week, uh, is as people move back to university... As uh, new freshers become new freshers, <laughs> and old freshers move into later years. Indeed. What was your gaming life like at uni? So, I guess I'll start. Yeah. In um, halls back at the first year that I did, um, you know, I like we we ended up forming a big sort of gaming group, I guess, inside mm-hmm. the university, inside no, not the university, inside, inside the, the hall. halls, and. It's kind of ended up with me meeting up with the same kind of people every day in my room, mostly. <laughs> um, <laughs> playing all the different games that we could play, really. Mm-hmm. Lots of Dark Souls, though. Yeah. Dark Souls was a really good one, because we used to uh, swap it around. Did you used to do it like Twitch, where you'd all shout at the screen yes. and then queue up the action? Yes, essentially. <laughs> 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 but that, at least that's what I kind of overheard while I was trying my best to ignore everyone. So now that you're now that you're not in halls, what's you know for people who aren't going into freshers, what's gaming like for you now? Like, how does it affect your lifestyle? How does it affect your education and that well, kind of stuff? It's a bit different at the moment because um, I think one of the things is when you're kind of close together, mm-hmm. living close together, you get kind of an experience playing the single player games because people are cool with watching and whatnot. Yeah, mm-hmm. but obviously when you're further away, that's not really an option anymore. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so we've ended up. Playing a lot more a lot of competitive gaming. All right, okay. In general, um, I've I've joined a few societies about it. Esports. Esports, yeah. And, and uh, are so you part of a Dota team yet? Getting there. Are well, we Are we going to honest, see you taking part no, no. against? I I am terrible. High powered Asian League players. League of Legends. I love Dota, but I'm terrible at it. Are you a jungler? Yeah. No. I haven't got to the point where I'm good at where I'm I'm good at or love Dota that much, right. but I can see it getting there. You have to play. Well, no, my, my friend, Crazy one of my hours. friends always says um, that he's, you know, not an expert, he's pretty bad at all this kind of stuff, but he's played like 800 games or something. <laughs> so, <laughs> wow. So this is the thing, 800 hours and that's, he's, he's fairly good. He's all right, yeah. Middling fair. I'm like, I've done 100, I'm uh, pretty awful. I think I've done two. <laughs> <laughs> so what about your fine self? Me? Yes, you. I'll, I'll admit, for the most part, my gaming experience in university has been... A uh, single player experience. It's what one does instead of socialising <laughs> if one is sick of, of everyone else. Oh, oh. I have very much uh, used it to um, to keep in contact with you, Cam. Yeah. Um, because we were a rerun a server, uh, and where we can, we uh, we spent an awful lot of time um, last year, no, the year before last, uh, trying to get it to uh, work. To work. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we um we we run a a server for Minecraft um so that we can all get together and play well Minecraft um without having to you know be in the same room and it's a good way to stay in touch um and sort of sort of socialize without properly socializing certainly socializing uh, on the keyboard's length <laughs> yeah and like but like it's got that kind of presence situation like I know I'm in the same virtual place as you and like i know i i can mm-hmm. ask for your help which i always do or say why am i dying like it's, it's got that kind it's a of non-competitive uh social gaming it's like i i kind of consider it the same way as socializing as i would if i were to talk to you on skype mm-hmm. if that makes sense yeah so like but you can't kill things on skype well you could but probably only once <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> yeah um you guys had like pretty good experiences with your I mean, first years in halls. Oh yeah, yeah. So like, gaming was a fairly social thing for you. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, for I me. would, I would, I would definitely say when it came, because because later, uh, I I uh, I did. Sorry about that. Carry on. I did have uh, some experience with the uh, with the computer society, mm-hmm. and when I was doing fundraising, um, and got thrown headfirst into their uh, competitive gaming. Um, experience, um, but that, but that was a completely different experience, and I, I, I uh, 
that was not the kind of thing that I uh, I went for. Yeah, you're not much of a multiplayer PvP kind of thing. You have to put in an awful lot of hours to be any good at PvP. That's true. That's very really true. And I don't like having to be really, really shit until I'm good at <laughs> something. <laughs> Yeah, I um I had a bit of a, a different time of it where um I didn't really get on very well with my housemates. And they were they were gamers in as much as they they enjoyed, you know, card and FIFA quite particularly. They played Halo in the main in the sort of shared room quite frequently. Mm. But for me gaming was like a, a, a way to decompress and de stress after like after revising and after doing all the you know, the the housework and this, that and the other, the <laughs> kind of stuff you have to do just to get by. Like, gaming, even though, like, the first thing I bought at uni was Assassin's Creed 3. Um, <laughs> um, gaming was a way to, like, decompress and, and de-stress and, yeah. and sort of have that time with yourself again, which was really nice. And now that, like, um, the two years after when I moved out of those halls and in with... Uh, in with my my girlfriend and into our own sort of shared flat gaming became like um like a treat it was like the carrot on the end of the stick <laughs> like i i would allow myself at least i had to give myself like a few minutes of gaming and reading before i went to bed like it was my way of de-stressing and readying for the next day and i found that like i was i was getting like entertainment and I was getting my brain ready for the next day but it was also like take you know still doing what I loved and doing that no yeah. mm-hmm. favorite thing as it were okay yeah oh sorry no 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 go for it no go for it when, when you're living in a house with other people that you've met in like once you've gone out of halls and if you're not living alone or with a, a significant other when you're living in a group of other people it's actually a very good single watching someone else playing single players or playing yeah. single player with other people watching. It's a perfectly good, um, uh, what do you call it? Social bonding exercise. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it's also how I know everything I know about like other franchises that I wouldn't have actually played, like uh, Metal Gear. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Or, uh... Yeah, I can agree with that. No, All you're right. It is, it is kind of like watching a movie together, mm-hmm. except there's... <laughs> There's almost less awkwardness because one of you's in control, so at least one of you is definitely invested in mm-hmm. what's happening and what's being played. So, like, you get over the first hurdle before it even really crops up. Does that make sense? I find that, <laughs> from my experience, it's quite awkward being the game player in a oh, really? kind of situation. Yes, because you don't you don't have the mental processes free to do the talking. At least well, in my case, it it it's that and. Um... You're thinking other people are watching me. Am I actually playing good? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or it's not even that. It's, it's like, are, are people actually enjoying watching me play? Or no? I don't know. Are they just being polite? Yeah. See, that's the thing. I'd worry I'd backseat game too much in that. Like, I worry that I, I couldn't help myself from <laughs> sort of no. reaching for the controller and pulling back. <laughs> so, did you? Did any of you join like any societies or any groups or that kind of stuff? Or I guess technically, I'm in a gaming society. Okay. But only really technically. <laughs> you know, I, I use it as a social kind of we chat and st- about different games, but I don't really take part too much in the actual uh, multiplayer game element of it. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And the one thing I can, the one like really good experience I had with gaming was we had a, um, we had seven assignments in, in nine days. <laughs> Uh, and so mm. we got to the point where we finished a few of them but needed to bash out like another two in one yeah. day so we went there was this all night uh, cafe that would that was they served like 24 hours a day and so a couple of us took myself and a guy called JD uh, took our, took our laptops down there and worked <laughs> until the early hours in the morning and then at about 7 o'clock I think it was we finally finished our assignments and we slammed the paper down on the desk like what the hell do we do now? <laughs> because like, uni doesn't. We don't have uni for another few hours. We can't go home and sleep. And we both, we both had this moment. Where it was like Left for Dead. <laughs> so we played, we played Left for yeah, Dead nice. two for a good few hours in this in this twenty four hour this empty twenty four hour cafe. 
It was really, it was one of those um, nice. Oh. nice keep you going moments. But if you're if you're going to uni and you're you know you're worried about. I mean, worried about gaming sounds silly yeah. when, like, you're going to uni, but it's one of those things, like, you going to uni, you will kind of worry about how you're going to maintain all your hobbies and maintain the things that, like, you think make you you, if that kind of makes sense. Yeah. And, like, the best advice I think I, I personally could give would be just make time for all the stuff you love. Like things will fall by the wayside and that's okay like i studied a degree in film and by the end of it movie watching fell by the wayside mm. Mm. and like watching tv fell by the wayside but i enjoyed gaming enough that i made time for it so if you you know if you still are energized by it and enjoy it enough that you want to do it you'll find ways to make time and sort of get around that and whether that be social or whether that be decompression or whether that just be to sort of keep up with what's going on in you know discussion in the industry and that kind of stuff like it's all kind of relevant i guess yeah mm. yeah definitely yeah yeah do you think there's anything to uh to add to that mm. i think it's worth seeking out societies really yeah yeah that's definitely true that's a very good point definitely yeah. and if there aren't one if there aren't one if, if there, there isn't aren't... a society or like a society for the specific thing you love oh, start yeah. one definitely because it's not hard to start one, and the thing is, if you like gaming, there's probably or or a specific game or how like even if you like the horse section from Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, there's probably at mm. least a good few other. Does anybody really like the horse section from Assassin's Creed Brotherhood? No, probably not. But there's probably someone in your uni who does. So yeah, definitely like take the plunge and start one up because it'll be good for you in the long run. It'll be good for everybody else who likes horses in Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. You're wrong. Yeah, you're wrong. <laughs> and it sucked, but, you know, you can still enjoy yourself. Yeah. yeah. Um, and also, like, you, I don't know if you guys had this as well, but when your student finance comes in... <laughs> don't go crazy? Yeah, don't go... Yeah. Turn off Steam for a few don't, days. Yeah, don't buy Assassin's Creed 3 on day one for the amount of money they charge for it, because it's horrendous and ridiculous, <laughs> and you'll you'll only regret it. But, um, but do pre-order Fallout. Yeah? Yeah, do, no, yeah. <laughs> definitely <laughs> augment your pre-order. Yeah. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> oh. Yeah, but like I think the... um. Yeah, you'll have probably more money to buy games, but then you'll also have a lot more responsibility to, to do with that money. So, you know. Just it'll be fine. It'll be, you'll fine. be fine. You'll be fine. Just... Play stuff. Play stuff with people. Play stuff on your own. Play stuff whenever. <laughs> it's all good. Mm. Nice. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, shall we move on to the indie game? Yes. Yes? Yes. yes. Do you want to introduce this one, or should I give the details about it? Or... To you. I'll give the details about it. So, um, this week, uh, the indie game is a series of... I, I think there are a series of games called yeah. Rusty Lake. Um, although, the actual games themselves are called Cubescape. Basically, they're like single room um, kind of platformers, kind of puzzle games, kind of murder mysteries. I wouldn't call it a platformer. You wouldn't call it a platformer? No. I, I kind of call it a platformer, but okay. Tell us what mm -hmm. you think. I think it's a straightforward Escape the Rim um, um, puzzle. Quite a, quite a well done one. Um but I, w I would say that it is enough to say that they are a genre in their own right at this juncture. Yeah, okay, yeah. But okay. enough talking around it. So the games are called uh, Rusty Lake, and they are... Uh, they're individually called Cube Escape, so like there's The Mill, Seasons, The Lake, uh, Case 23, so on and so forth. There's uh, They all join together, kind yeah. of, am I right? So, like... There is a kind of chronological order in which to play them through. Yeah, but um, some of the games are related to each other. Yeah. Yeah, but like, there's also they also work pretty nicely on their own. Um, they, I think they're developed by Rusty Lake. Yeah. I think that's the name of the studio as well as the yeah. the, the setting. Yeah, I can't find any um, information to sort of suggest otherwise. They're free to play, um, but not free to play. 
as in free to play monetary free to play like they're actually free to play <laughs> um you can get them i believe it's on uh, ios as well as uh, they're online. They're online at www.grustylake.com, which you can find in the description below. But you can also find them on Congregate and that kind of stuff. Um, and they're good fun. The interesting thing about them, I think, is the um, the art style. Yeah. There's something creepy about it. Yeah. <laughs> it's really, like it's quite unnerving in a good way. It's uh, mm. salad fingers but with sharp yeah. edges. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> it's all kind of creepy cartoon hand drawn but i don't know what it is i think it's kind of something in the animation mm. the way it's animated just feels a little creepy yeah but yeah um they're good fun to play through they are free oh point and click point and click that that's they're a, kind a point of, and click adventure yeah basically. that's a pretty good way to describe yeah. it they're a point and click room escapey puzzle solvey Creepy murdery simulator game. <laughs> there okay. you go. Turn that into a hashtag. So yeah, um, <laughs> that's Rusty Lake. Yeah, and that's our ending game for the week. What colour do you think the Rusty Lake is? I'm going to go blue. From, really? Blue if it's rusty? Yes. Yes. Incredibly. Can you get blue rust? No. So why would it be blue and rusty? Makes things rust. Mm. Um, maybe maybe it's a copper nail that's rusted. So that, ladies and gentlemen, uh, was the latest episode of Games Up Podcast. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining me. That's quite all right. Uh, we are going to take a week or two's break uh, while we get ready for EGX, and then we'll be back uh, doing the stuff that we usually do for EGX, and maybe even a little more. So um, look forward to that. Thank you very much for joining us. Take part in the competition, and um, because... You could win something that lots of people, well, hopefully lots of people, want to get their hands on, because EGX looks very cool this year. Um, and if you do win, maybe we'll see you there. Uh, thank you. All right. Thanks. Good. Yes. Uh, and we'll see you next time. But until then, the game's up.